So hi everybody, it's Craig Wilson from Avid here and thanks for taking the time to join us today for the latest in our Frame the Future virtual event series. Now this is the second in our series, our first looked at how Avid is exploring ways of using artificial intelligence in the media business. Now if you haven't seen that, I highly recommend you check it out on Avid's YouTube channel. Today we're going to be focusing on the work of the Avid Community Association known as the ACA. Now if you haven't heard of the ACA before that's perfectly okay, we're going to let you know lots about it and we're going to hear from people who are part of it and also from some of the leaders at Avid who'll talk about the value they get from the feedback we receive from our user community. If you want to ask questions today, then please feel free to do so in the Q&A through Zoom. And if you're watching on any of the Avid social channels, then we're keeping an eye there too, and we'll do our best to answer our questions there. But to start, let me introduce Laurie Durkin. Laurie is the Senior Director of the Avid Community Association, which this year is marking its 10th anniversary. Laurie, thanks a lot for joining us. Now, for anyone who doesn't know about the ACA, tell us a bit about it, why it was set up, and what it offers. So the AVID Community Association is a group of uh, AVID customers and users across every aspect of the media and entertainment industry. So it's everyone from the technologists in broadcast to the creatives who are producing music to students or young creators. We have about well, more than 40,000 members. And it was established so that we AVID could develop a closer connection with customers and really understand their needs and their challenges. You know, we want to serve our customers and our community by providing the tools that work for them. And um, the best way to figure that out is by talking to them directly. You mentioned there that it's about 40,000 members. So that's a big cohort that expands you know, across, the, across the world as well. So from your perspective, why is it that the ACA is so important to, to AVID and how we develop our products and solutions? So the ACA community is set up um, primarily as a means for um, AVID to get feedback from its customers. So we have an ACA executive board. We have ACA committees um, across all of our products where we meet on a regular basis um, with customers and users and hear directly from them about what works and what doesn't work about our existing products, what they wish we would develop, what they're hoping to, um, how they hope their work streams will evolve in the future. So it's everything from the short roadmap of what's working in a current program to the longer term view of, you know, what is my job going to look like five years from now? And that helps AVID to really understand our customers' needs and challenges. We also, the other side benefits of the ACA are really to do with um, connecting with peers and um, a lot of great relationships have formed out of these committees where people uh, get introduced to someone new and maybe bring them in on some work or they learn new workflows from each other. Um, so they're really productive um, collegial kind of meetings um, that are, are fun to witness. Smashing, great. Okay, Laurie, thanks a lot for that just now. We'll come back to chat again later in the event. But for now, let's start by hearing from some of the people who are part of the ACA and what their experience of it has been. So we're going to start by heading to the west coast of the USA and to hear from Sherry Klein. Now, Sherry is a highly experienced re-recording mixer for television and film who's currently with Smart Post Sound in California, but has worked across the industry in various roles. And she's been speaking to my colleague and fellow product evangelist at Avid, Michael Krulik, about her involvement with the ACA. And this began with a meeting with some Avid staff to discuss the latest features in Pro Tools a number of years ago. But when she was asked to get involved, she was concerned she did not have the right skill set. So let's hear from Sherry now. I'm a user. I'm not a geek. You know, I'm not an electron. I, I don't know the stuff that, you know, the inter. He said, no, we want users. And that was right before the 7 2 release, which was the big post production release, if I remember correctly. And I was working on the both the icon and the control 24s. So I had a lot of issues as the betas were coming in. I had like a direct line to Avid and I was like, how come every time I create my console and my custom faders, all the faders get filled? Ah, we need a hide fader, you know, hide hidden kind of thing. And there were a lot of little things like that that I was coming up against going, why is 
Why is, and with that direct line, because I was in the ACA, so many things were dealt with. So that's how I got into it. And that's why I thought it was so cool because I saw impl impl implementation. So obviously the experience that you've had with the ACA has been very positive. It really has. I was out of the ACA for a little while. And then a couple of years ago, um, somebody called me, Jonathan Wells, I believe, called me and said, I think you need to be back in the ACA, especially because when the S6 came out, I was brought down also. And there were a lot of pages that came out of that visit. So, so being part of the ACA has also helped with, with networking, obviously, you know, with Jonathan Wales and other people, whether you had left for a while, they wanted to pull you back. Uh, it, the experience has helped uh, networking in the industry as well. Absolutely. It's how, I mean, it's helped networking, but it's also helped. I really feel in, in, in so many levels, having the ACA and the fact that AVID continually has meetings in person, online, whatever, um, things grow and things ruminate and things happen because sometimes you get so caught up in your work and so caught up in what you're doing that you don't have time to necessarily, you know, write to AVID and say, Hey guys, you know, we want to do this. We want to do that. Or can we do this? But when everybody gets together, it's like a brainstorming session and things get said and things get done. So, I mean, along those lines as well, how's the relationship been between the ACA, uh, you and uh, AVID's leadership? Um, I, I, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's been very good. Um, I know there's been a lot of changes and I'm very happy that the new management or the new leadership seems to be very keen on keeping the ACA going because in, in past times, sometimes it wasn't first and foremost. And I think that AVID being the leader at this stage needs to be able to go with the times and go with what the people need and not become an obsolete program. And you also mentioned, you know, the, I believe the fader option or the, the one, you know, feature that you, you know, figured, Hey, I'll bring this up at the ACA meeting. So your, your involvement definitely helps with roadmap and product development. I mean, you're part of the process when you're part of the ACA. Yeah, you definitely are part of the process. And I think that they want to see that and hear that from users, not just the people that are really into the internal geek stuff that, quite honestly, I leave to the geeks. <laughs> I leave to my techs. There are times when I can troubleshoot things. There are times when I say, okay, it's time to call a tech. I don't want to get into those inner workings. And especially when you're dealing with something like the S6, which is so deep, you start messing around on some of those pages. If you don't know exactly what you're doing, you can really screw things up for yourself. So you're better off dealing with somebody who knows that stuff. I don't consider myself somebody, I consider myself somebody who can get in there and read and look through. And then before I do make too, too many changes, I usually call in my tech and say, if I do this, am I going to get this? If I do this, am I going to get this? Because I want to make sure it's what I want. And the language sometimes needs to be interpreted. And also in lines with, you know, the, the leadership and your the feedback that you provide with the ACA, you feel you have a direct connection with people who are on board to take the feedback that you do provide and act on it. Absolutely. At least I've, that's what my experience has been. Whether it, you know, sometimes it takes longer than you'd like. You want everything yesterday, but I'm seeing that it happens and that's what counts. And it takes time to go through betas and to go through testing. And there's, you know, there's definitely a queue, a lineup for things that need to be done eventually it will get done and i understand that and as long as somebody doesn't put a block on me for what i'm saying i'm happy i mean it's a great um sort of meeting place for people with the same interests in post production absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so you would definitely encourage people in the sound or any post-production 
part of the industry to become part of the ACA as well, right? Absolutely. I think the more people and the more diverse the group becomes, the better the product becomes in time. Because nobody works, and this is what I tell so many newbies, you know, that want to come and or a copy of your template or something like that. Nobody works the same. We all work different. If you took 10 mixers and put their templates together and looked at each one, they're so different. There might be similarities on certain things here and there, but we all work differently because we all work, our brains all function differently. And so when you look at a template, it doesn't mean that that's the God truth. You know, that's how it has to be. It's like you figure it out. I came from analog consoles, so I still think in a layout. That's why I didn't want all those faders. I, I wanted the hide hidden. I want to know that if I set up my console in a way, if I, if I bank down, I'm going to come to the end and there'll be some blank faders. That's okay because I still know where everything is placed because that's how I think. I don't want every fader filled because then it's confusing to me. Where, where, what level am I on? And I think the fact that that happened way back but the fact that that happened made everything else easier, you know, and the fact that that my feedback changed something for the better. Moving from audio to video, let's hear now from Danielle Di Stefano, who is the executive vice president of post operations and technology for ITV America, working across the company's six production labels and overseeing all aspects of post production. What does she think? Of the ACA? It's been great. I mean, I think it definitely took a little bit to get going in terms of the group and sort of, I feel like we gelled right away, the people that we included. And, and I worked with the AVID team to help collate a list. So we had a diverse group of people from different backgrounds, but also still kind of part of the same trials and tribulations of the industry. Um, and so, you know, once we got a few sessions in, I think people started opening up a lot and really having a really good dialogue. And I work with the Avid um, uh, product designers. I work with the Avid product designers to basically come up with the topics for the committee and the group. And we have a Slack channel where we try to get input from the team, uh, from the committee members. And so we basically just try to talk about topics that people are interested in. That also helps Avid determine, you know, are they on the right path with their with their roadmap items and with their product launches. And so it, it's become a very positive and collaborative experience. I think, you know, sometimes we wish we could meet more and sometimes there's not enough to talk about. So I think it's just finding that that balance each time we meet. How would you categorize the kind of relationship that, that exists between those that are on the committee and the AVID leadership team? Is it is it a dialogue? Is it a sort of collaborative environment? How would you sort of categorize and describe that? I think the way that we form the committee group sessions is basically three sections. You know, there's like an informational session, which I think is really helpful for those that join where they can get new insight into what AVID's up to and what AVID has coming down the pipe, which I think people really like other than, you know, NAB or, you know, um, other big events it's really nice to have that dialogue and get demos so we try to do demos with people so they can learn about what's happening in avid and then the next part of our our workflow is that we then have topics that are industry challenges or things that people want to that they've submitted that we want to hear more about and then there's usually a q a at the end so um to answer your question i think you know there's definitely more of a dialogue and a conversation it's prompted by topics that we've you know, curated ahead of time that we think are going to be topics for people to talk about. We used to have a lot more topics and now we've we've sort of narrowed it down to a few because we have a chatty group, which is good and people want to get into it. And I think, you know, there's definitely some people that that really engage a lot. And I think it just encourages others to engage more. Um, I, for one, is I'm someone that never really wanted to talk um, in public or two people. And so it's a, it's a stretch for me to have to lead the group, but I think it, it's also a good thing. And, and I try to come in ahead of time with some prompts for people to get them to engage. And I think once the conversation gets going, the time goes by super fast. And I think the AVID team has been really good about taking the feedback, listening, you know, um, not being super corporate -y or or defensive about things or, or sort of, you know, just open, I guess, is, is the point. The AVID team is basically 
very open to hearing the feedback. And I think that's the whole point of the, of the groups and the feedback loop. And do you also see that the work being done by the committee and those conversations actually bearing fruit when it comes to things like roadmap or product strategy for you know, how Avid is delivering? Yeah, I definitely do. And I think, you know, with the, the, the announcements that have been made about Avid Ada and some of the advancements of the tool and Media Composer, um, I definitely see some of those conversations coming through in the latest product launches. And I think, you know, we're hopeful and looking forward to seeing more of that. And do you think as well that you get a sense that in those meetings that you're having, Avid is there to listen as opposed to kind of dictate even things like the agenda. It's very much, it's up to the people who join the committee to drive that conversation. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a two-way street for sure. I, I definitely, that was kind of one of my stipulations was I, I don't want to just jump on board. And I've had very honest conversations with David about like, how does this work? And how are we doing this? If I'm going to be, you know, helping. And I think the goal and the whole reason they get someone in the industry to be the chairperson of the committee is to have the committee have a voice. Um, so again, it's more informational and then what what are the challenges of the industry and then what are the product, you know, the roadmap items that that sort of help answer some of those or or is there a world in which we're not going to answer some of those right now and we'll we'll think about it for the future. And so I think it's very much a two-way street. I think the Avid team does a really good job listening. Um, and I think it really depends on the group makeup and how engaged the the committee members are. Um, I would anticipate if there was a group of people that weren't as engaged and interested, then you know the conversation may be a little harder to have. But um, we've, I think, picked a really good group of people, and we keep having people, you know, get added to the group, which I think is good as well. Yeah, and really a final question. You know, would you encourage people? who are perhaps not involved with the ACA to, to get involved with the ACA? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's only a couple hours every couple of months, right? Like it's not a big commitment. And, and that was always my concern was the commitment. And I think um, it's not a big commitment and you can always learn something. And, and the best part about it is sitting amongst your peers, realizing we're all in this together. We all have the same challenges, especially... You're talking about unscripted, but even, you know, scripted and unscripted have similar challenges, maybe at different levels. But, you know, now with cameras and, and codecs and LUTs and HDR, um, there's just so many similarities that we're all dealing with that if nothing else, it's really good to make those connections, I think, and and feel like you're not alone in this, especially in this remote world where not everyone is in offices and, and seeing people and collaborating as much. It's kind of nice to come together and realize you're all in this together. Um, and then it's nice to have that dialogue with Avid where, you know, we're beta testing something right now that probably wouldn't have happened if I wasn't part of the group and said, hey, we're willing to beta test something. So I do think it's really good for people to get involved if they want to have a say or if they want to learn about what's coming up. Thanks a lot to Danielle for her great perspectives there. So what does the ACA mean to Avid? I've been speaking to a couple of Avid's vice presidents of product management. Dave Colantoni on the video and media side, and Francois Caroy from the audio team to get their views on how the ACA influences the direction which Avid takes. First of all, let's hear from Francois. I, I think, I mean, we're very privileged to have established something like the ACA, especially for folks like me and my team who are in charge of, uh, of making our audio products. Um, we have access to basically groups of people that you can only dream of. Um, the, really the movers and shakers in, in media technology, the folks who mix you know, the blockbuster movies, who compose the soundtracks to the most amazing films, the people who mix Grammy winning records. And uh, because they use our tools in such a, such a deep fashion, it's really a part of of who they are in, in certain ways and why they are successful, they're all willing to give us an amazing amount of time and feedback to help us do the right thing for them. So it's a very symbiotic relationship that we're having with, uh, with the ACA where we let them know what we have in mind and then they give us ideas and then we run 
you know, we spit their, their ideas back to them in our fashion. And eventually we end up, you know, creating products, creating features and workflows uh, that really serve them and make them more creative, more productive, you name it. So for us, it's, it's really one of the most fundamental things um, that feed our product development engine and our intelligence when it comes to really delivering what our users uh, need from us. Yeah, there's a whole variety of committees um, on both the video and the audio side. So on the audio side, can you outline, outline the kind of work that they do? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we, uh, we used to have only one audio committee and we quickly realized that there are a lot of a lot of different workflows in audio. Um, you know, obviously there's people producing records in, in their bedroom. There are people mixing records in amazing studios. There's people composing soundtracks. There's people mixing, um, you know, mixing big feature film sound. There's folks doing localization and dialogue replacement. So the variety of workflows is almost overwhelming. And, uh, we we actually decided to split that, um, which is probably not enough. We probably need more <laughs> focused conversations. But at least for now, we have uh, a committee that's a little bit more focused on music creation and music production, and another one that is a uh, more focused on post production and professional mixing. Because there there's a lot of overlap and and similar workflows. So we we meet on a regular basis. I mean, we try and we try and have these committee meetings on a quarterly basis. Uh, sometimes we uh, manage to do those in person as well in certain geographies. Like we go to LA, we go to London, and sit down with uh, with some of the groups. And really, these uh, they're extremely interactive sessions. Uh, in some cases, we have a lot to talk about. Like we want to test an idea, we want to show them what we're working on, we want to share our roadmaps and in some cases we just put a, a you know basically a topic on on the board and just have conversations and hear hear people's ideas and and get into conversation we pretty much never stick to the allotted time these groups are uh, everybody wants to talk everybody wants to have a productive discussion sometimes the discussion actually gets quite heated between uh, between different representatives of different parts of the industry. And that's great because that fosters creativity. Uh, so we do that in the committee meetings. And then that has spurred a lot of really cool things that are going on outside of the committee meetings because we're interacting, whether it's over email or even in separate meetings where we think about, let's say we want to test out a new feature in the MIDI sequencer of Pro Tools, and we know there's only a subset of the group that's going to be really interested in that. Then we have these kind of separate meetings uh, where we dig really, really, really deep and bring some of the engineers and product managers on uh, in the meeting and really get to the bottom of what we need to create. The ACA is almost, it, it's invaluable. It, it brings direct voices from our customers to product management and everything product management does is in full interaction with our customers or potential customers or even others in the industry we really try to take feedback on the products and solutions that we develop every day and try and get feedback from customers so that we have clear direction on the strategy that we're trying to um, satisfy or the products and features that we're putting in our products and solutions so that a it's going to be valuable to them they're going to use it they're going to be able to be more efficient they're going to be able to do the things that they do every day with avid tools um, so that they continue to prosper in their careers and are able to create the greatest content in the world it is really an important thing for us to be able to talk to ACA members and I would probably say the most important thing um hearing from our customers is really really the most important thing and the aca absolutely 100 percent provides that feedback to us so there are a variety of aca committees uh, that meet fairly regularly and they span across you know range of products on the video side post-production obviously news um, as well and um, how would you characterize what those meetings are like first of all they're fantastic we get such good feedback but they're very different 
Um, we actually have editor committees. We have um, journalists, news journalists committees, the people that actually use the tools, the technology that sits behind our news workflows um, and post-production, um, post-supervisors. So the feedback is really directed at the individuals who participate in the committees. Um, so for instance, for, for um, motion picture editors and television editors, um, we obviously hear a lot about Media Composer and the workflows that support what they do every day, but also assistant editors. Um, and they're constantly giving us direct feedback on the features we're developing or future direction and things like that. Whereas you might look at um, some of the tool users on Media Central and we're sharing with them a similar thing. How does this work for you? We have a direction we want to go in um, on some development items we're thinking about. What are the things that are getting in your way every day in order to get your job done successfully? So we have those types of conversations. And then we actually have um, more strategic conversations with some other groups. Um, so we might be able to find out, oh, well, here's the general direction of the industry. And here's what we're seeing. Are you seeing that? Are you able to provide us with some feedback? Um, so that we're aligned. And that actually helps inform the way we're going to create our products and solutions in the future. And it could be for a brand new product we're thinking of creating or or maybe even redeveloping something like um, some part of our editing platform. And so it's really invaluable. The committees are really our way of reaching down and touching into um, each organization for the people that are using the tools or making strategic um, decisions on which tools they're going to make and providing the feedback directly to the product management team. I mean, I've been involved in some of the meetings, Dave, as, as obviously you have as well. And I think it's fair to say that at times it can be a robust discussion oh, that, yeah. uh, that goes on with, with, within it. So it's not just about you know, people turning up and saying yes to everything that Ab is proposing. It is a genuine discussion about the direction that we want to take. It is about feedback. Yeah, absolutely. What's interesting is we don't just have Avid users on these forums. We have um, competitive people that use our competitive products. Um, we want to hear from everyone. It's not necessarily about just this product feature all the time. It could be about, oh, on the editor side, I use a, you know, a competitive product to Avid and I really like the way they do this or you know what, you might think about this technology that's emerging um, in editorial workflows um, because we've seen it in other products and we really like the way that works. Where it's really open, that's my point. And we're able to take different opinions, we're able to take different um, sort of voices that use other products in the industry and we're able to learn from that and that's really what we want to do because we're in a technology space and we're at the intersection of technology and creativity so there's a lot going on um, and there's a lot of demand like if you look specifically at things that are happening in hollywood with films and tv production and streaming media the amount of content that is being created these days is is absolutely staggering and the demand uh, from consumers for what they want to watch on on the various services they have at home is so massive that there's definitely an emphasis on how do we make this work uh, you know more efficient um, how how can I take away the mundane and really focus on the creative aspects of my job so they really kind of inform us at like very real immediate pain points that we need to put our heads together in solving uh, and then they inform sort of the more longer the longer term direction as they start identifying trends in their own businesses and their own market space where they can tell us oh we believe that in three four five ten years uh, these are the things that are going to matter and for us it also informs as we do planning we do we do recurring planning on a yearly basis and obviously we have very tactical things that we plan for but we also have very strategic things that look at uh, much longer term horizons so these um these groups really inform both but francois what would you say to anyone who's perhaps you know listening to this but would consider joining the aca what would be your message to them um well, first of all, as as you said earlier, it's uh, it's an it's an amazing opportunity to network, 
Um, I'll give you an example, which I was really, really touched by. We have an ACA chapter in Nashville, and uh, we uh, we had several meetings at, uh, at a fantastic recording studio there. And one time, we actually included uh, students from various audio engineering schools in the area, and students that have now become part of the ACA. And they came they came over to the studio. They got like a a preview of some cool stuff we were working on on the music creation side but more importantly they got to sit in with really famous professionals that mix you know grammy winning records every day and everybody is so incredibly generous with their time and their advice that uh, it gave those students an amazing perspective and you know obviously having to interact with us the manufacturer um it's a, it seems it sounds a little bit more corporate, but uh, the development teams at Avid, uh, we're all passionate about what uh, what we do. It doesn't matter if you're on the video side of the business or on the audio side of the business. We're all personally vested in what we do. And this, you know, my background is not uh, this is not CGI. This is real. Like I'm a, I'm a musician. I produce music, so I have a, a my heart is in it at a very very deep level. So it's really great for us to kind of have this sense of community with our users, whether they're new users, students that are learning the craft, or the people that are well established and and doing the amazing work that uh, that everybody enjoys around the world every day. So this is a you know this is a learning experience for people. This is an opportunity to really contribute to the tools that uh, that they use or one will, will want to use at some point. And it's definitely an amazing community um, that's been growing over the years. And I, I can say I've seen it. I've seen it blossom over the past six years that I've been involved in it. Uh, and I always really treasure the time that we have with our ACA committees and, and ACA um, folks at any event that we put together. So thanks to Francois and Dave for their thoughts. But Laurie, I wanted to bring it back to you. Now, we've heard today from some pretty senior and experienced people. So what's the ACA doing for younger people, perhaps, who want to get into the industry or starting their careers? Is the ACA for them? Absolutely. Uh, you know, you just heard from some great industry professionals that we work with, but AVID wants to engage more with younger creators and students and learn more about their needs because they could differ and often do differ from what industry professionals are looking for. So we're trying to create a tighter connection there. And honestly, the industry professor professionals are urging us to do the same thing. And they really want to interact with that next generation um, and you know, work with them directly to the extent they can. So um, we are we have had some events with young creators and students. We will continue to do that. We actually have an ACA chapter in Nashville that is specific to young creators and students. Um, so we've gotten together with them multiple times to really understand where they're coming from as creators and as um, you know, mix engineers on the Pro Tools side um, and learned a lot about you know, what, it, what their challenges are and what AVA can do to help them even more. So those chapters um, are pretty flexible. We can set up more of them and really hope to do that in other areas where it makes sense. And um, it's a good way for students to network with each other, too, and, you know, to learn from peers in the same way that the professionals do. We are trying to set up, um, you know, in the future, more content where we are um, creating opportunities for industry professionals and students to mix together. We did that very successfully in the Nashville chapter meeting, um, and we hope to replicate that in other places. And we're also working on a model for um, internships to try to uh, find existing internships that are available and pair up students who might be interested in um, learning in that kind of environment. It's a great first step for them. So um, we're trying to develop that model currently and hope to do that. And you know, anything we can do to engage with the community further is what we want to do going forward. You know, we it's such a rich community for us and um, there's so much value in it for us. I think the members get a lot of value out of it too and that's why it's a it's a popular um, group to be involved in. So um, you know we're really hoping that 
more young creators and more students will come and join us. Laurie, that's great. Thanks so much for taking the time to, to join us today and to talk a little bit about where the ACA has come from. We've heard from some great experts um, today and, and senior people within the industry talking about their experience of it. And also we've heard about the value that Avid uh, gets from that. So Laurie, thank you so much for now. Now, if you want to find out more information uh, about the ACA, then please Check out the AVID website. There's lots of information and detail there. Uh, scan the QR code that's on the screen now, and that will take you directly uh, to the webpage where you can find out more inf information and hopefully get involved. Uh, but for me, Laurie, the uh, AVID team that are involved uh, today with this virtual event, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to join us and enjoy the rest of your day. Mm -hmm.